Hey there. In today's video, I will discuss the key ingredients in creating fondness and admiration, which is Dr. John Gottman's second principle for happy and healthy relationships. Building feelings for fondness and admiration for your partner isn't rocket science, thankfully, but it, it does sound simple and it's rather complex when you put it into practice. So let me break it down for you. Just know, first of all, that any good relationship can turn sour. The person you fell in love with can become the person you no longer can stand anymore, um, but that doesn't mean it can't turn around. So turning the tides of negativity um, can be difficult once you've kind of lost interest in each other, but it's not impossible. And even if the atmosphere of your relationship is pretty positive these days, it always stands at risk if you don't learn how to work hard to maintain that loving feeling. So you have to be intentional. Work to recall a time, you know, when you were first falling in love. Um, dig to unearth all of those positive feelings and emotions you once had for them. Um, building fondness and admiration also means building gratitude and learning how to walk down memories lane and, and kind of remember things that you love about them. Um, remind yourself that the things you like about your partner um, that have always been part of them, um, maybe also start learning what's new, um, how they're changing in ways that you really um, appreciate. Look for what you like about your partner, um, you know, that, you know, maybe is specific to them and isn't necessarily something that anyone else um, that you know has, so something very special about them. Uh, focus on whatever it is that you really love about them and try to start, you know, scanning the environment for what you do like about them rather than what you don't like about them. Um, when a couple starts to lose these, this fondness and admiration for each other, it, it's kind of like a cancer that has started forming. Um, again, it's very treatable, but this kind of contempt for each other has entered the relationship and it's really important that you learn how to root it out. Um, thankfully, rebuilding fondness and admiration again is the perfect antidote for contempt, which we know is the number one predictor for divorce. Um, and liking your partner is also a wonderful buffer against regular stress in life. Knowing you're going home to someone that you can, um, that you really like um, and admire and respect can feel like um, a safe harbor um, in the storm of life. Um, but developing a fundamentally positive view of each other does take work. So know that if you're able to do this, this can also um, prevent what's called the four horsemen. And these are very um, well-researched relationship killing behaviors like criticism, defensiveness, stonewalling, and contempt. Um, and so if you're in the practice of scanning the environment for what you like about them and you're trying to really practice that muscle, you're much less likely to kind of focus and really harbor uh, on the, the things that you can't stand about them. Um, so, you know, starting, you know, starting to increase, you know, uh, conversations and discussion with each other also can help each other to open up and, and makes them more likable. Um, you can start to notice sort of the positives of your partner um, more if you're in the regular habit of, of you know, checking in with them and showing them that you care. Um, and so one of the first steps that you can take towards improving this whole fondness and admiration thing in your relationship is, um, you know, is to, to think about what are you currently doing maybe right. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and just take a mental note of which ones of these, which of these questions you say yes to, to kind of get a pulse on where you are at in this in your relationship. Um, can you easily list a few things that you most admire about your partner? When you're apart, do you often think fondly about your partner? Do you often find some way to tell your partner, I love you? Do you often touch or kiss your partner affectionately? Does your partner respect you? Do you feel loved and cared for in this relationship? Do you feel accepted and liked? Does your partner find you attractive? Does your partner turn you on sexually? Is there fire and passion in this relationship? 
Is romance still definitely a part of the relationship? Are you really proud of your partner? Is your partner really enjoying your achievements and accomplishments and celebrating you? Um, Can you easily think of the reasons why you married this person or why you committed to them? If you had to do it all over again and choose to be in this relationship, would you? Um, Do you rarely part from each other without showing any sign of love or affection? When you come into a room, is your partner glad to see you? Does your partner appreciate the things that you do in the relationship? Does your partner generally like your personality? And is your life together generally satisfying? If, if you said yes to most of these things, you're probably doing okay. If it was really a struggle and if most of these things kind of brought some sadness or some frustration, uh, it's probably time to start working on this particularly. So here are some exercises you can do if you are struggling these days to like each other or if you really are feeling um, like there's more dislike and kind of, you know, um, irritation with each other. So number one, start with appreciation. Start by listing the things that you appreciate and like about your partner. So for each item that you write down, be specific um, and like create an example of when you can remember how, you know, your partner showed like a, this really positive quality. So if you wrote something down, like, um, you know, they're really generous, um, maybe think of that time that, you know, they went above and beyond on, you know, your, you know, some big gift for your birthday or a time that they really tipped a waiter well, and you really loved how they treated that other person. Or, um, if, if you love how, you know, attractive they are, be specific about what you find so attractive, whether it's part of the way they look or their personality. Um, but you get the idea. Um, and so number two is, you know, think about the history and the philosophy of your relationship. So take some time, remember something positive from your history together, and then share this with your partner. So again, go down memory lane, think of a really awesome time or a good memory. And that can also, you know, really reinvigorate some of your good feelings towards each other. Um, and then last but not least, number three, um, try to start practicing that muscle of intentional daily thoughts and actions that make you feel positively about each other. So, um, for at least a month schedule and rehearse, um, daily thoughts about your partner, whether you share them aloud or not, take notice when they do something or say something that you like or appreciate. Don't just keep it in your head. That's a mistake that a lot of people make. And, um, once you start sharing this, um, you know, think about other ways that you can do other than just words of affirmation. Um, take some time to schedule or rehearse kind of daily rituals or tasks that make you feel positively towards them. So, you know, maybe when you say goodbye every day or when you reunite every day, make sure to give them a hug, um, you know, and really let them know, I love you. Um, make them coffee. Um, tell them one thing that you like or love about them. And, you know, if you're struggling with this, if it feels too cheesy, um, too bad. (laughs) It takes a lot of intentional effort to create a healthy relationship. And, um, if, if this is too difficult to do, um, you know, your own pride could be getting in the way, um, again, or the awkwardness of this, um, someone probably just never taught you how to be a good partner. especially if it wasn't modeled for you by your parents. Um, And so this may feel foreign, but it doesn't mean that it's not really healthy and good for your relationship. Um, Just like learning how to exercise, you know, if it's not something you're used to doing, you're likely not to like it at first. Um, So know that this is what the the research and the science on healthy relationships long-term says about being critically important to a long-term satisfying and healthy relationship. You have to practice scanning the environment for what they're doing right, what you like about them, building that culture of appreciation rather than what is more normal for us um, humans, you know, to really have a negative filter and to really be more critical and start to only notice the things that we don't like about our partner. So good luck.